Welcome back to Jamming in Air Repair for part 5 of the Vespa Rejuvenation. I picked up some of this stuff from the old Napa store. And uh, uh, it's assembly grease. So, motor assembly grease. Motor assembly grease. So, let's assemble the motor. All right, what do we got here? The book shows you that uh, uh, you do this with it installed in the bike. Obviously, I have a lot of the bike. I'm going to do it now. This is a new cylinder. It comes with the exhaust pipe, which means the one I bought here, I can return and get my $9 back or whatever that was. So that's good. Inside here, I have a piston. It's pretty standard fare. Inside here, you have the two rings. Okay? And uh, I am going to push those out. I'm going to push those out using the piston. Um, there's two of them here, obviously. And, uh, <laughs> great. I just read the book. Because it's okay to take something apart without knowing how to do it. I recommend putting things back together with some instruction. That book describes these rings differently than what I have in my hand. Which is uh, frustrating because these look like two lower rings. The upper ring is supposed to be an L-shaped. So... Not the original. I'm gonna go in there, dig that ring out of there. It'll probably break, but who cares? So let's just take a little examination of how the original originals are put in. You can see. Uh, maybe you can't see. Hold on, hold on. I'll get you there. Alright, the ring is angled in a V pattern, and it sits on a pin right here, okay? That is the same thing I have here. Yeah, this is going to be hard. Maybe I'll take some pictures and stick it in right here. Now, the question is, is what shape is the top one? That V shape is correct. But what shape is it underneath? Come on, snap off on there. Come on. So what I'm looking for is the shape of this inner edge, and it is square. Oh, sorry, the inner shape of this edge is square. So, let me 
you don't think that way. Hop the black stood it. The book describes this as an L-shaped. In other words, there would be a notch right in this corner here. And the original does not have that. Hmm. Maybe I was looking at the wrong uh, engine size in the book. So, okay. So it looks like the it looks like the rings are the correct size. All right. Now I'm trying to distinguish any other differences between them. I know they're going this way. Kind of think they're the same. I mean, we're not making uh, 200 horsepower here or anything, you know. So, durability. I should check the ring end gap on here if I were a perfectionist, which I am not. So here's a new wrist pin. All right, so we have everything we need here. Let's get these rings installed. Come on, baby. <laughs> you know what? All right, I'm gonna take some lube and put it on these on. Uh, on this piston. See if that'll help me get, uh, oh, isn't that just wonderful? Came on as clumps. How long has this thing been hanging that gap by, I wonder? I asked the guy if he had a smaller tube, he was like, no. I mean, this stuff is supposed to be sticky, isn't it? Come on, baby. <clears throat> All right, it took me a little part in the wrong to get it to go onto the second groove. A little bit of lubrication helps a lot. Lining up your pin so it's in the gap here helps a lot. Sweet. All right, 
You see how it locks onto that pin? Got your other pin over here. Sweet. All right. Let's get the uh, piston connected to the crankshaft. All right, so now there's something I don't know is which way is, that's the exhaust side. So, I have to figure this all out, figure out which side is the exhaust on. You do not want to put your piston in backwards. Okay, so, in the bike, the exhaust points down, like this. This is the exhaust part right there. So it points down, okay? Or to the right. The uh, flywheel goes on the pointy end. So the exhaust, there's a little arrow right here, points to the exhaust, and I should really double check that. On Suzuki's, the arrow points to the exhaust. I am not sure that's true on the Vespa. Let me look. All right. The book makes no mention of which way the piston should go. So, uh, handy, all right. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull it with the arrow pointing at the exhaust. That's all I can tell you. Let's get some assembly lube in here. Like a four dimensional Chinese puzzle. Just gotta kind of jiggle it. It's an awful long ebb play. Okay. Put the snap ring in here. Push the pin the rest of the way. Put the set snap ring in here. Sometimes being blind is very inconvenient. So, so that snap ring sitting in the groove. I'm going to come on this side and push the wrist pin down all the way and put the snap ring on this side.
right. Now I have this problem. This ring needs to go on there, but uh, it does not fit because it's a press fit. So I have to heat this guy up. They say 100 degrees will do it. Heat this guy up and then get a 22 millimeter pipe. Pull it on here. Ding, 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 ding. Pound it on there. I do not have a 22 millimeter pipe. So I'm going to have to look around and see what kind of pipe I do have and uh, I'll make it work. So I need to heat this up. I'll bring you back when I figure it out. I don't know if this is the right size pipe or not, but it's all bashed in so I can't tell, but it looks really close. So I'm going to cut off five or six inches here and hope it's right. <laughs> Close. So I'll probably cut it straighter. Kinda got it wonky. So now I wonder if I can get a 22 millimeter washer. Cut this straighter, grind, grind it on the grinder there. Get it straight and use that to wrap it on there. I think that's a good solution. I guess I gotta run to the hardware store and get me a 22 millimeter washer. Dang. That's alright. It gives me a reason to ride the Yamaha around. This washer I had to go to Ace Hardware. I think it's a three quarter inch washer. Okay. And I made sure that it fit over the crank shaft here. And this size washer fit perfectly on there. All right, I have the bearing race in hot tap water, about 135 degrees. It's been in there for about five, five minutes, maybe more. It has to go on here. But the secret is, is you can't go all the way down. So here's the race on the old one. And you gotta look real close. But there is, there is a gap here. Okay, so I gotta leave that much of a gap. Don't pound that thing all the way down. So it lines up with the bearing. Makes sense. Sure. So this should be, the book says to warm it up to about 100 degrees. So it should be somewhere around 100 degrees. Don't even get hot. Then I have a washer. Then I have a driver. Probably be more prepared. Come on, you gotta fit on there. Oh, you turkey. Yeah, you fit. Come on. Yeah, that's perfect. That's my feeler gauge, by the way. So, that turned out pretty well. <clears throat> I've never done something like that before. So good. Now, we can move forward. I was actually stuck on that one for a couple of days, afraid to do it. So, well, let's go and jam this in the motorcycle. We're at the part of the build that decisions have to be made. 
and this is the clutch assembly. All right, I have not opened this up. I bought the tool to take this apart. I bought all the new plates for it. Um, and now that I know how it goes together, it's not that hard to change. So I've decided to not rebuild the clutch, okay? I'm gonna just put it back in there the way it is, 1,300 miles. How bad can it be? So I'm gonna stuff this back in there. I'm gonna use it, see how it works. If it gives me trouble, changing this thing out is not hard at all. So if this was a pain in the ass to work on, I would definitely do it now, but there's no real advantage to it. So I have to find my uh, wood drift key. I'm afraid I may have lost it. Dang. All right, I found it. It goes in here. Come on, baby. Crap that in there. I go down a little, little tappy tap here. That looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, well, I'll put some lube on the seal. Right here. Slider in here. So you're not supposed to hit on the end of this shaft. Okay, so I'm going to take you on the other side. Oh, I have the uh, the shock absorber attached right now. Let me disconnect the shock absorber here. But then it all drops down. Son, bitch. <sighs> Hold on. can see a little better. See the things I have to do for you guys? Ay, 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 ay. So, I can leave that gear in here. Align the key. Come on, baby. There you are. I got gotcha. you. Try the right nut, Joe. Right nut job. Hey, caramba. Yeah. 
Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you think this is easy? You do it. Oh, all right. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Alright, let's pull out the old Milwaukee. I have it set on number two. I'm holding the back end here so I can feel the shaft going in. Bump the button. Ratchet that up one more. Okay, there it stopped. Uh, all right. Now we have to pop that clutch back out. <laughs> Come on. Just no big deal. This here. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. Alright, so I put the drive gear back in there. And oh, come on, stop doing that. Alright, I 
have my new locking washer here. It's got a little tab. Slide that puppy in here. Tapping it down with another screwdriver, get her nice and flat there. So, new locking washer, new nut. Come on, baby. Impact. All right. Must be about thirty foot pounds. I got my new tool here. Hooks on the bolt, hooks on the stick, and the uh, clutch. Kind of holds it real nice for you. All right, perfect. I'm going to bend one of these tabs over to lock her in place. I'm going to do that one right there. Beautiful. All right. Put this guy back on here. Let's see these hook into the groove. Let me just kind of pry this down. There's pops in there. No, oh, baby. That's how I thought I did it. Well, let's go the other way. Put the loop. Okay. What the hell? I swore I hooked the tabs. First. Come on, baby. Oh, I know why. There's a flat side. Dumbass. Why don't you say something? Make me sit out here struggling, putting a round peg in a square hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamming in there. Pull just comes off of there. Sweet. Now then, just need to pop the sucker back on here. I gotta pull a little, little piece fell out of here. A little piece fell out of here. I'm really not sure how it goes in there. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, 
That's that piece. There is another piece that goes from here to here. Somehow there's a piece that goes from here to here to push on this guy. To kick her out of gear. I'm having a hard time finding it. Dang rabbit. Let me take a look around. Alright, I found it. It's this little brass thing. Sits in here. You know what? I think I'm going to dump some grease on that. Just to hold it in there. Yeah. Use some assembly lube. Sure. All right. Three bolts hold the clutch cover in place. I've made absolutely no adjustments to this clutch because I don't know how to adjust it. And it was working before I took it apart. Come on, baby. And put that on setting one. All right. I'm not sure what the tech spec uh, torque specification is on these. I'm just putting them tight. <laughs> that's probably five foot pounds of torque. I was going to go to 10, but that seems a little tight to me. So there you go. <laughs> so now I can raise the engine back up. Yeah, there you go. Get her uh, back on the shock over here. So I think we're done taking this side apart other than adjusting the clutch if it needs to be. And there's the brake adjuster and the clutch adjustment right here. So um, we'll probably look at the procedures on how to do that. I need to clean the brakes with some brake clean and uh, so you put the wheel back on. But I'm not going to. I'm going to wait. <clears throat> Just for the heck of it, how does that clutch feel? It seems to work. I can feel it. So, it worked before, it should work now. All right. Next thing we're going to do is put this side together. Um, unfortunately, I'm running out of time for tonight. Alright, here we go with some assembly. 
I'm really not sure how to do what I want to do here. Have the spring installed here for the uh, um, Kickstarter. There's a blob of bunch of grease on there. Should hold it in place long enough for me to, to assemble this thing. <sighs> you know what? I think I want to put the uh, Kickstarter on. I'm really not sure. Let's try doing it without putting the Kickstarter on. Getting lined up here. Where am I? Um, you know what? I maybe should ought to pull a gasket on here. Alright, that was a test fit. Let's do that again so I'm not tearing up the gasket while I'm trying to learn how to put this thing together. So you gotta lift the piston up out of the way. Then there's a shaft down here I seem to be stuck on. Oh, there it goes. Alright. Yeah, I think that'll go together. Might need a little tappy tap here or there. Alright. Did my spring stay in place? It looks like it did. Alright. The gasket kit came with two gaskets. This gray one that seems to be a bit thicker. And the blue one is much thinner. So for obvious reasons, I went with the thicker, heavier one. See how that slips on there? That's your Kickstarter. Mm, gotta pay attention to that. Give it a shot here. Gonna need that cat starter around here. Darn it. You gotta turn this lever to engage the gears on the Kickstarter so it's holding me up. close the gap right here. Some 
she's on her good and tight now. Excellent. Now it's just a bunch of screwing around. <laughs> All right. A flat washer. I'm reusing all my washers. I don't think that's a problem. They're not rusty. Okay. I gotta pull all of the studs back through. So I'm gonna put you over here so I can work. Maybe I'll put you in fast forward here because this is kind of boring. So the next thing we can put on is the cylinder and the head. And then maybe we can do a compression check. Problem with that is my compression tester sucks. All right, I'm gonna try torquing them down to about 11 foot pounds. I think I have to take this one back off. I think I'm missing a bracket. Oh, there it is. Bracket here. Goes right there. Alrighty then. Come on, baby. I like it. All right. I think I want to run the fuel line and the electrical 
wires. And Lou Grom would do all this do all this work right here before I put the cylinder on and it gets in the way. So hopefully it can Yeah, so I may as well get this all straightened out now. I gotta take the tank out anyhow, rebuild it. So if I put the cylinder here, that'll be a pain in the ass to get to that hose. So I'm not gonna do that. Alright, this is looking pretty good. I'm pleased. So I don't know how well this will show up on camera. But there's a little bit of the gasket sticking up here and down here underneath the piston. So I'm simply going to take a razor blade stick a rag in here I don't drop anything in we're going to just simply scrape that sucker clean there you go Nice. Good. There's still a little bit of it here in the cylinder. Hard to show you. Right here. On the camera. Right here you can kind of see the line. So I'm going to go and try and wipe that off. I'm just rubbing it my, with my finger and pieces are coming off. I have to hit the cylinder in here. I don't want that gasket to be getting in my way. I do the same. <coughs> I do the same to the top. Be real careful not to drop it into the cylinder. You see that? Hmm. I like it. All right. I was going to replace this fuel line before installing the jug and the head and everything here because it's obviously easier to get to. But that requires rebuilding the entire gas tank, which is something I'm going to do. I just don't want to do right now. I want to get the uh, cylinder on here, the head, and a spark plug in this thing and I want to see how it rotates over. Um, that's as far as I'd like to get on this video. The stator is finished. Scooter West is uh, sending it back to me. It'll be here next week. I will not be, so I'll be on vacation. So I'm trying to get this video done so you have something. We're going to start by hooking up the gear selector here. All right. I have the gear selector set to horse gear, a, a little past horse gear. You want to get this little, this guy right here, um, to go into this groove right here. And then add to these two bolts. Which I hope isn't too difficult. Oh, I gotta go over this. Under that. I was afraid this was gonna be a pain in the ass when I took it apart. So alright, so I'm in the groove. Line up my holes. Oh, baby. Mm, 
It came out of a groove. Come on, baby. Let's start over. Well, man, come on. How is that possible? All right, get this guy in here. I'm gonna put you back over here. Okay, so now I'm going to go and turn the shift lever from force down to neutral. And hopefully, it'll suck this whole assembly in. Gotta get this bike off of these kickstands here. Here. It's tucked in here somewhere. Anyway, I'm going to get the nuts on here. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll call that a practice run because I forgot to put, I forgot to put the gasket in. So, all right. No, I can't get her off. Come on, baby. <sighs> All right, shift it back to fourth. Pull it around. Come on, baby. There we go. All right, that was fun. All right, I'm told. It's a good idea to grease up this gasket. So I'm gonna grease it up. Why not? Just layer of booby doob. Nice. All right. Okay, 
Okay, let's give it another try. Come on, baby. I'm getting a little grease up on that mechanism. Now then, try shifting it. There we go. Hey, well, you know, second time is a charm. Grease up on this thing here. Flat washer, lock washer, nut. How the whole bike is put together. So what has to happen here is I have to put the cylinder on so I can put the tire on. And the reason I have to put the cylinder on first is because yeah, put the cylinder on because I have to hook up the exhaust, which has to be put on before I put the tire back on. Has to be done in that order, or it won't work. I call that tight. All right, I think that's all we have time for today. So I'm going to wrap the video up here. Thank you for watching. As usual, hit the subscribe, ring the bell, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. It all helps me out a whole lot, and I appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot more coming up on the next project, so stay tuned. Bye bye Are you done? Knock the shit off, honey. <laughs>